right, how y'all doing today? Yeah. Excellent. Well, today our show is about when Joseph and Mary were on their way to Bethlehem so Mary could have the baby Jesus. So our show is going to show us what that might have been like. So, without further ado or any more nonsense from me, the Faithful Hands Puppet Ministry presents... <laughs> the Innkeeper. Take it away, guys. Boy, what a night, I tell you. The tourist season's got nothing on this census thing. Well, at least it's good for business. I'll say. We've had more business tonight than the weekend that the Exodus on Ice was in town. Up. Uh, main desk. What? When's the continental breakfast served? You gotta be kidding me, buddy. Get up and buy your own bagels. You believe these people? Now, honey, just think, the night is almost over. Soon you can go lie down in your nice soft bed and drift off to sleep. Well, actually, I was meaning to talk to you about that. Don't tell me you rented out our room, too. Hey, they, they were willing to pay extra. P people are desperate for a place to sleep, my dear. I've even got people sleeping in the holes. Every inch of this inn is full. Hey boss, room number 214 is asking for ice again. Ugh, for the hundredth time. Tell him we don't have an ice machine. Okay. And where, may I ask, am I supposed to sleep? Don't worry, dear. I've got it all worked out. We can sleep in the bathtubs. Well, that sounds wonderful. Hey, you always said you wanted a waterbed. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. Think of it this way. Come morning, you'll be the first in line for the shower. Ah, uh, main desk. Well, of course there's no cable TV in your room. In case you haven't noticed, it's the first century. There's no TV either. It hasn't been invented yet. Well, fine, go ahead and call the motor club. Unbelievable. Honey, don't let it get you so upset. Every time I turn around, it's something new. I need new towels. I'd like a 5.30 wake-up call. There's something with ten legs crawling through my sheets. This phone has been ringing off the hook. This is by no stretch of the imagination a silent night. Oh boss, the lady in 109 is asking for a triple-A discount. Does she have a car? Uh, she has a camel? Nah, sure, why not? Okie dokie. Um, excuse me, I'd like a room for the night, please. Uh, look, mister, we have absolutely no room left. No vacancy. Are you sure? You see, my wife and I have traveled all the way from Nazareth, and my wife is going to have a baby any time now. Listen, pal. Murray, surely you have some place where this young man and his wife can stay. After all, she's going to have a baby. I'm telling you, there's no room. I'm not going to give up the bathtub. The only place where there are no people sleeping is the stable. Well, we could stay in the stable. I'm not renting out the stable. Sorry, pal. Uh, why don't you try the Motel 7 down the road? Uh, we're full. But every place in town is full. Please let us stay in the stable. You really want to stay in that stable? Yes, we need a place to stay. You have any idea what it's like to sleep with animals? I mean, just the smell of that moose alone is oh, enough- Oh, Murray, just let them stay in the stable. Oh, all right. Boss, the moose escaped again. I don't have time to chase him down again. I'm sure I'll find his way back when it's time for dinner. Alrighty. Come on, I'll show you the way to the stable. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. <sighs> what a night. I can't believe those people are actually gonna stay out there with all those animals. I think this whole census thing is starting to affect people's minds. Uh, not again. Front desk. Listen, ma'am. I don't even know what a jacuzzi is. But, ma'am, okay, listen. The jacuzzi is right next to the miniature golf course. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> that ought to keep it busy for a while. We have a miniature golf course? No. Oh. Murray, that was a very nice thing you did for those people. Well, I wouldn't have usually done that. But after all, his wife is having a baby. And it's not just any baby, Murray. Uh, 
What are you talking about? Well, that young man told me that an angel told them that this baby would be the Messiah, the Son of God. Wait a minute, slow down here. Yeah. Are you trying to tell me that the Messiah we've been waiting for all this time is gonna be a baby born in a stable? That's right, isn't this exciting? Hang on, did you just say the Messiah is gonna be born here? Tonight? Yes! But the, the Messiah is meant to be a king. He should be born in a, in a castle or something, not a smelly old barn. Well, the Messiah won't be the kind of king that lives in a castle. He'll live in our hearts and will one day save us from our sins. What a night this is. I can't believe the Messiah is finally coming. This is amazing. I gotta go clean out that manger. Come on, let's go get some sleep. Tomorrow morning, we'll go see the king. Yep. Everybody, it's Teacher Sharon. We're going to do Bible time now. And are you excited? This is December and this week is Christmas. It's on Friday. I'm so excited. I bet you are too. Did you notice who I have with me today? This is one of the wise men. Some people think that they were kings too. He looks like a king, doesn't he? Do you know this guy, he is out in my yard during the Christmas season. He got to come in today because he got to be in the Bible lesson. Isn't that nice? And I decorated him for Christmas with a Christmas necklace. I have a necklace. He has a necklace. We're just having good time celebrating Christmas. So now I have a little animal friend with me. Can you see him? What animal do you think this is? Did you say dog? Okay, he's got a Christmas song he's gonna sing. So everybody be really quiet. Let's see if we can hear his song, okay? Ready? singer. Do you know that song? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. That's a good Christmas song for you guys to sing. And we are going to do something special. Since this is the week of Christmas, you know what we do at my house on Christmas morning? We sing before we do anything, before we open presents, before we eat breakfast. We sing happy birthday to Jesus. That's the first thing we do because that's what we celebrate on, Jesus, or on Christmas is Jesus' birthday. So we're going to do that right now. Do you guys know the happy birthday song? Do you? Okay. Then you won't have any trouble singing happy birthday to Jesus. All right. Let's sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Dear Jesus, happy birthday to you. That's right. We are so happy that Jesus was born and that he's our Savior. And it's a great celebration that we have today. Well, it'll be on Friday. Friday. And so right now, we're going to do prayer time. All right? You remember my saying? Up in heaven, God is listening to each word I say. For he loves me and he listens to me when I pray. All right, let's all say a prayer. Let's close our eyes and fold our hands and we're going to talk to God. Thank you, God, for all the blessings you give us. Thank you that we can celebrate Christmas this week. Even if we can't celebrate with all of our grandmas and grandpas and uncles and aunts this year because of the virus, help us to have a good, good celebration and sing happy birthday to you and remember you on this special day. Help us to be especially helpful to our parents and thankful for all the things that we might get on Christmas. And we say in Jesus' name, and what do we say? Amen! That's right! Good job, everybody. We're going to do Bible verse time. All right. And you remember our Bible verse, John 3, 16. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And we're going to do, for God so loved the world. And then put your hands out like you're giving something. He gave his only son. That's right. So we have a little song, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. John 3, 16. Good job. We've been practicing that all week. How are you doing at learning it? Have you learned it? Okay, so we're going to talk a little more about that verse. And I have a paper here, over here on the side that you're going to see. I don't know if it'll be on whichever side it's on. But, for God so loved the world, and it shows in the paper a cross. Because Jesus died on the cross. He was willing to take all of our punishment for sin. Everyone. You know why? He wants us to go to heaven. He wants us to go to heaven. And what we have to do is believe in him. But he was willing to die on the cross. And then in the picture it shows a tomb. He was buried in the tomb for three days. And then one, can you count? Two, three. And after three days, the stone was rolled away and he was alive. Jesus was alive, which is an amazing miracle. Because Jesus is God. And he defeated death. It just shows you that Jesus is not an ordinary man. And we know a lot of stories about Jesus, how he walked on water, how he healed people. And he went around teaching everybody about God and the kingdom of God, heaven, and how to get to heaven by believing in him. And you, you can get to heaven. You can believe in Jesus. You don't have to be a big person to believe in Jesus. Little children can believe in Jesus. You just say you're sorry for your sin. What's sin? Anything that you think or you say or you do. Like maybe hurt somebody or steal their toys or when you're not doing the right thing, you know what those things are. You get in trouble for, those are sins. We're sorry for our sins and we want Jesus to forgive us. He will. And... He will help us every day. He'll come bring his Holy Spirit into our life and help us every day. We'll get these little thoughts in our mind that we should do something especially nice or we should not do something. We get these voices in our mind and that's the Holy Spirit telling us what to do and helping us every day. And the whole goal is that we would be more like Jesus every day as we learn we get better at doing the right thing, and when we die, we get to go to heaven, which is awesome. That's right. So that's our Bible verse. And before we do our lesson, let's sing the Bible song. Are you ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's a book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. What's that spell? Bible. All of our stories come from the Bible, and we're learning the Christmas stories this whole month. So we have a new one for you today, and my friend, Mr. Wiseman, is in the story. All right. So let's start by talking about when Jesus was born. Angel Gabriel visited Mary and told her she would have a baby, God's son. She was very surprised. You can see that in the picture. And the angel said, nothing is impossible with God. And that's still true today. She wondered how, what Joseph would say and what he would think about that she's going to have a baby, God's son. <sighs> Joseph wasn't too crazy about the idea. And when he was sleeping, an angel spoke to him in a dream and said, Mary would have a baby who is God's son, and you are to name him Jesus. Don't be afraid to get married. And they did get married. And what happened next is there was a census where you count people. Do you guys know how to count? Let's do some counting. One, two, three, four, five. They had to count all the people from um, in a certain town. And Joseph had to be counted in his homeland. And that meant Joseph and Mary had to go on a trip to Bethlehem. So there's a picture there. And when they got there, Mary was ready to have her baby. But you remember, 
There is no room in the inn. No room. So he was born in a stable, sort of like a barn where all the animals live. And his bed was a manger. That's right. So when Jesus was born, that same night, you know what happened? In amongst all the other stars, suddenly a bright star, new star, appeared. Of all the stars in the dark heavens, this one shone brighter and clearer. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale. God put this star there where Jesus was born to be like a spotlight shining on Jesus. The star was right above the stable showing people the way to Jesus. And now we are going to sing a song about a star, okay? So it's Twinkle Twinkle Great Big Star. Are you ready for that song? Okay. job. Now we're going to go on with the story. So God put the big star in the sky when Jesus was born. Some wise men, like my buddy here, they lived far away in the east, saw this star. They knew it was a sign. It meant that a baby king had been born. These wise men wanted to visit the baby. So they followed the star a long way. And the wise men chose special gifts to bring for the little king. Do you remember what those are? They brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's right. So if you ever get a gift, do you ever shake it and wonder, wonder what's in that? Wow. And you can see my wise man over here, he has a gift. I wonder which one he has, gold, frankincense, or myrrh? I don't know. So they packed for the trip and off they went in search of the Savior King. And it took a long time to get there. And in this picture, it kind of shows that they probably had to stop along the way a lot of times and feed and get the um, camels to drink. And they had to sleep maybe just right there in the, in the ground. And it might have taken months or years to get there because they came from far away. <sighs> and how did they know the way to get there? Remember what they were watching? The great big star. Yes, God gave them a star to show them where Jesus was. And they followed it. The wise men rode their camels across deserts, up steep mountains, night and day, until at last they reached Jerusalem. And here's a picture of what it might have looked like. They can see a city off in the distance. The big city of Jerusalem. It looks like the star is right above Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a big, important city. So that is where the wise men thought the king would be. But Jesus was not in Jerusalem. Do you know the city that Jesus was born in? Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a city nearby, just five miles, probably just a little bit further. So as they get closer, they will realize that it's not going to be Jerusalem, but Bethlehem. So here's a picture. The wise men went to King Herod in Jerusalem. We know a baby king was born, they said. Can you tell us where he is? 
This worried the king. He did not want anyone else to be king. He wanted to just be king. He did not know about this baby king. Oh, and he did not know that the baby king is God's son. And so the king said, I do not know this new king, said Herod, but you go and find him and then tell me where he is. He acted like he really wanted to see where the baby king was, but he did not. He was just like lying. Herod sent for the Bible teachers and his scholars to tell him about, you know, where is this king? People who know what the scriptures said about the king. The teachers found God's promise in scriptures about Savior King would be born in Bethlehem. So it was written down many years ago that Jesus, our Savior, was going to be born in Bethlehem. So now the king knows. So the wise men went on, and the star led them right to the place where Jesus was. And here's a picture. They were happy they found him, and they bowed down. Do you notice Jesus is in this picture is not a tiny baby anymore in a manger? He's walking, he's bigger, because it took him a long time, those wise men, to get there. Yeah, it took you a long time, didn't it? They gave him, Jesus, the gifts. Gifts fit for a king. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. God knew King Herod did not like anyone else to be called king. God knew that King Herod, when he said, tell me where the king, where Jesus is. I want to know and worship him. That was not true. God knew that, and you know what God did? God sent an angel in a dream to the wise men. And this dream told them not to tell King Herod where the baby was. So I can imagine in the morning after they had this dream that one of the wise men said, I had a dream. I had a dream that we should not go tell King Herod. And maybe the other wise men said, I had the same dream. And then the other wise men said, I had the same dream. We should not go tell King Herod. So they were pretty probably amazed that they all had the same dream. And the wise men decided to go home a different way. They did not tell King Herod. The wise men did not tell King Herod, and King Herod was upset. He wanted to find the baby king, and he wanted to kill the baby king. Didn't want anyone to be a king but him. Oh. He realized that those wise men should have come by now to tell him, and they didn't. Um, God knew what King Herod was thinking. Remember I just said he wanted to kill the baby king, Jesus. God knew. So God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream. And here's a picture of Joseph sleeping, and God sent an angel. The angel said, get up, run away to Egypt. Stay there until I say you can come back. So an angel warned him, and they got up. Mary, Joseph, and little baby Jesus, and they escaped to Egypt. And Joseph and Mary and the baby lived in Egypt until King Herod died. And an angel came again to tell Joseph, you can move back now because it's safe. That's right. So that's the end of our story. And we hear about how the wise men came and gave gifts to baby Jesus. But he wasn't a baby anymore. So you know what we do in my house? We have a little nativity scene, which has Jesus, baby Jesus, and Joseph and Mary and the kings. We have them kind of like far away. And as we get closer to Christmas, they keep coming closer because they're on that long journey. That's right. That's what we do. And finally, they get to come in our house. So we just have fun with that, that the wise men are coming and they're getting closer and they're getting closer. <laughs> so now um, we're going to sing another Christmas song, Away in a Manger.
So I hope you guys have enjoyed singing Christmas songs and I hope you learn them so that you can sing them for your family. That'd be really fun. And today I'm going to show you some little toys that are camels and wise men that I have that you, if you have any of them or you could like decorate your toys to be them and pretend they're wise men and, and camels, maybe you have some animals and how they are going on a long journey to see the new king. Who's the new king? Jesus! And how, when they get there, how they bring gifts. Do you remember what the gifts are? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Special gifts for a king. That's right. And I just hope you have fun playing with that them. And I also wondered, you know, are you going to be able to do some fun Christmas activities with your family? One of the things we like to do is make gingerbread houses, Christmas gingerbread houses. Have you ever done that? Well, you take graham crackers and frosting, and then you take little candies or, you know what I use? Nuts and raisins and chocolate chips and whatever I have, or I go get some candies and I decorate my house. You want to see what the house I made? I'll show you. Here's a picture of it. And then when you're done, you, I hope you take a picture of your house and then you can eat it later. Right. In my, my little house, I have some gummy bears and gummy trees. I even have gummy worms. I like gummies, don't you? Aren't those good? Yeah. So it's just kind of fun to do. Oh, I also have M&Ms, one of my favorite candies. <laughs> so. Oh, and I have a pathway that's a mango. We like to eat mangoes at my house. These are dried mangoes, and it makes a nice pathway. Right. Okay, well, maybe you get to do that, too. That would be fun. So this Friday is Christmas. I hope you have a great celebration with your family and celebrate Jesus' birthday. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.